Indian Research Foundation and our host organization, Indra Prastha Apollo Hospital. I am delighted to extend a very warm welcome to teachers and professionals from some of the most reputed and respected schools and teaching institutions in Delhi. A very special welcome to parents who had specially expressed a desire to attend today's webinar and to my dear colleagues from Apollo. I am Rajalakshmi Chandru, working with the Apollo Hospitals Group for 30 years and one of the five founder trustees of the New Raider Research Foundation. It is a pleasure to also have with us this morning my fellow former trustee who together conceived and sold the seed for Euro A way back in January 2006. A very special welcome to Dr. Mukul Varma, Senior Consultant Neurology. The others may join us. I will introduce them as they come. And the pillar of this hospital. Mr. P. Shukumar, our managing director, has been most supportive of the activities carried on by the Neuroaid Foundation. He is personally invested, left all his personal commitments to be here well on time. Dr. Usha Banerjee, who I had the privilege to introduce to some of you a few minutes earlier. Dr. Kathleen Usha Banerjee, she is a group nursing director. Thank you, Chuck. Before we begin today's program, with the auspicious lamp lighting followed by a short seven minute audio visual on our foundation, let me introduce to you the host for today, Dr. Nidhi Kashyap. She has a master's in physiotherapy, specialty in neurosciences, and certified in manual concept management. In her professional career of over 15 years, one of her very significant positions was as assistant professor at the Banarsi Das Chandimala Institute of Physiotherapy, from where she graduated. Nidhi has an excellent analytical mind. She is not just a physiotherapist, she supports us in other activities, just like our other, other therapists here in Madhita. She has exceptional written and communication skills and has mentored a number of postgraduate and doctoral students. We request Mr. Shivkumar, Dr. Usha Banerjee, Dr. Mukul Varma, we have another founder trustee, Dr. Pradeep Singh, senior consultant, plastic and cosmetic surgery. May we request you to please come and write the down. <laughs> Jumbo for The seed for NRF was sown several years ago by Dr. Pratap C. Reddy, chairman of the Apollo Hospitals Group. While on board rounds, Dr. Reddy continually stressed on touching a billion lives with care and compassion. I observed that recovery of patients with neurological deficits was really the slowest. The spark for neurorehabilitation was born then. 
The sudden rise is basically because of biological factors and environmental factors, definitely. But also there is an increasing awareness. So among the community, among the medical workers, among the social workers, among the schools, we are becoming increasingly aware of these conditions. Better screening and better assessments are allowing us to identify these children earlier and therefore we are getting a rise. But there is also an actual rise. The actual rise is happening because of biological factors and environmental factors. We are the teachers, we care about the child. Now there is a checklist available on NCRT. You can Google it out. It is a precious. It is P-R-A-S-H-A-S-T. Alright, that is a it's divided into two parts. One is part one. The part one is for the journal teachers and part two is for the special educators. And then the preliminary assessment is done. The assessment is done on the behavior issues, the learning problems and the developmental disabilities. The early intervention teams, the psychologists, the counselors, the special educators, the occupational therapist. So the occupations in occupational therapy, which is more than 100 years old, the profession includes every single activity from the time you wake up till the time you sleep. In fact, it also includes your sleep. Now, what does an occupational therapist do to develop certain skills? Now, what are those skills? Those skills could include anything from gross motor to fine motor to cognitive perceptual skills, the works. So, what an occupational therapist does is basically enables a person or a child to become functionally independent. Now, the key word here is functional independence and not complete independence. So, if the child is able to perform his functions effectively and efficiently, the job is done. Access for a physically challenged child. Whenever a child comes to the school, the first thing when he comes till the gate of the school and after that when he is supposed to enter the school premises and then to the classroom, a child bound with a wheelchair, the first thing how will the child reach the classroom? So it is better there has to be provision of ramps, rails, lifts etc. Lifts can be there if it is possible in the school otherwise the best thing is to place the classroom itself on the ground floor so that the child doesn't have to access to the other floors. By definition a shadow teacher is an educational assistant who works directly with an individual child with special needs mostly during his or her early school years. These assistants understand a variety of learning difficulties and uh, they know how to support them. So these are basically a definition of what is a shadow teacher. So we need a shadow teacher for children who need physical assistance, physical support, educational support and social support. So all these things are done by the shadow teacher and sometimes to fill the gaps also, academic gaps, the shadow teacher has to be that much qualified so that she is able to teach the missing, you know, the, the fill the gaps which the child has. What exactly is a speech language pathologist? Because there's a lot of terms floating out there. There's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, doubts about what it is that we do, who we are, what our profession is about. So as per the NHS, the National Health Service UK, SLPs provide life-changing treatment, support and care for children and adults with difficulties in communicating, eating, drinking, swallowing, etc. People with neurological, physical and psychological disorders have trouble communicating and that is where a speech language pathologist comes into effect. So in a nutshell, an SLP diagnoses and treats the following. Speech sound disorders is something that I will be covering in today's presentation. Cognitive skills can include slow learners, dyslexic, receptive and expressive language skills cover the ability to comprehend, expression lies with the ability to express themselves, fluency or stuttering is self-explanatory, swallowing and feeding. Now this is something that I would like to highlight. Not a lot of people know but speech pathologists also serve as feeding therapists and also help with swallow therapy. Children who have difficulty in feeding, adults with dysphagia, with aphasia, these are the people who come to us for help.